Hello beginners to English literature. Welcome back to my channel English Entry. Today I brought you a very interesting lesson on poetic meter and rhyming scheme. When we learn poetry in English literature, it is important to identify or understand how a poem is constructed or the shape of the poem because poetry expresses meaning with beauty, style and feeling using rhyme, meter, rhythm and poetic devices. Specifically, uh, rhyme along with meter helps make a poem musical and emotional. So it is very essential to understand these concepts, rhythm, rhyme and meter. Rhythm is a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. Rhyme correspondence of sounds between words or the ending of words, especially when these are used at the ends of lines of poetry. And also there are rhyming words within the same line, it is called internal rhyming. Meter is the basic rhythmic structure of a verse or lines in verse. You don't have any idea about these things yet, but keep in touch and stay with us until the end of the lesson. You will understand everything. I'm going to explain this in detail. First of all, we have to understand the importance of these elements. When a poem is rhythmic, it is easier to remember for recitation. Rhythms are enjoyable. Rhyming also helps to remember recitation and it gives a pleasure. A pattern of rhyme helps to establish form. Whenever you see this uh, regular pattern A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, you understand, you identify it as a Shakespearean sonnet. So, uh, these are specific patterns, regular patterns of rhyming words uh, help you to find out the form of the poem. Meter is an important part of poetry because it helps readers understand rhythm as it relates to words and lines in a poem. Meter helps a poem to maintain this constant flow, the regular flow, and also it helps to set the tone. In a sad poem, there might be three syllables or less number of syllables to slow down the pace. In an uh, energetic poem, there might be more syllables to fast the rhythm. With the help of meter, the poet expresses emotions and feelings adequately. So, in order to uh, find out the meter of a poem, we have to have a sound knowledge on syllables and stress. Syllables are all about speech sounds. Generally, a syllable is larger than phonemes and smaller than word. B basically, all syllables have a vowel sound. I will introduce this picture throughout my presentation. Then you will be familiar with this concept, vowels and consonants. In each and every syllable, there is a vowel sound. It can be a single vowel sound, which means it is a monotone. If there are two vowel sounds together, it is a diphthong. There are, if there are three vowels, three vowel sounds together, it is a triptong. There, always in every syllable, there is a vowel sound. These vowel sounds are represented by this king. This king is the vowel sound and also there are two soldiers either sides of the king. They are to represent consonants. There might be single consonants or, or else two letter consonants. They are called consonant clusters or else there are three letter consonants. They are called also some consonant clusters. Look at this example. In some occasions in syllables there is only the king that means there is only a vowel sound in some occasions one soldier is left in some occasions the other soldier is left I want you to understand in every syllable there is a vowel sound the king is essential the vowel sound is essential but consonants or the soldiers are exceptional 
or uh, they are optional. Now we are going to count syllables in a word. There are three steps. It is like a calculation. Count the vowels in the word, then subtract any silent vowels. As in this example, same. E is silent, so we subtract it, we remove it. Then you can count the diphthongs. The number of vowels remaining is the number of syllables. Here in this example, we remove E and there is only vowel, one vowel sound, so only one syllable is in this word. In this example, there are three vowels and we remove E as it is a silent vowel and also there we take this as a single sound. O and I are, ta are taken as a single sound as it is a diphthong. So, in this word, there is only one vowel sound and also there is only one syllable. So they are called mono, monosyllabic syllabic words, monosyllabic words because there, are, there is only one syllable in these words. There are some rules when dividing syllables in words. You won't get any idea about these rules when I explain these things but when we apply these rules in examples you will understand everything so stay with us until the end of the lesson you will get an amazing experience. First rule is divide between two middle consonants. There are two middle consonants between these two vowels so we can divide from the middle of the consonants. The pattern is V, C, C, V. But we don't uh, divide these consonant clusters. We don't divide like this. This is the correct way, way of uh, dividing this word because this is a suffix. Whenever there is a suffix in a word, we divide uh, the syllables before the suffix. Divide before the consonant before an L-E syllable. L-E thiyana vana ita kalin consonant te kakti na ita kalin thamme api word dega divide karane. V C C L E. Usually divide before a single middle consonant. There is only one consonant between these two vowels, so we divide the word before the consonant. Divide before the consonant when the first vowel is long. First vowel is A, it is long sounded, basic. So we divide the word before the first consonant. The pattern is V, C, V. Divide after the consonant when the first vowel has a short sound. Here, this is a short vowel sound, cab. It is the first vowel and we divide after the first consonant. V, C, V pattern. With three consonants between vowels, usually split after first consonant. Look at this example. There are uh, three consonants between these two vowels. So we divide from the first consonant. V, three C's and V pattern. With four consonants between vowels, usually split after first consonant. In this example, there are four consonants between these two vowels. So we divide from the first consonant. V, four C's and V pattern. Okay, the next rule is divide off any compound words, prefixes, suffixes and roots which have vowel sounds as shown in these examples. As you all are beginners for this work, I will suggest you this website how many syllables you can just google it and find out then you can uh, confirm your findings by searching in the search bar you can find the number of syllables and the stress on the syllables if you can't find it I will put the link of this website in my description box you will learn so many things uh, by referring to that website now we are going to find out the meter of the poems that we selected. In the previous lesson, I gave you a brief introduction to Romanticism. Uh, there we selected two, uh, four poems. 
I told you they are not the best representatives of romanticism but we I had to select from our anthology but don't worry there are still some aspects of romanticism in these poems so now we are going to find out meter and the rhyming scheme of these poems first one is to the evening star by william blake it the first line of that poem is thou fair haired angel of the evening now we are going to count how many syllables are there in this line and uh, the stress pattern thou fair haired these are monosyllabic words only one syllable is there in this word there are two syllables how did you decide it we have to go back to the rule what is the rule behind this there are two consonants between these two vowels so we can divide from the middle of the is a monosyllabic, monosyllabic words um, evening here e is silent and there are two vowels between these two vowels so two consonants between these vowels so we can divide it from the middle okay now we divided syllables and found the syllables now we have to put these syllables into feet there must be two or three syllables in a feet today we are going to talk about only two syllable feet we don't go for three syllable feet okay how many syllables are there in this line thou fair haired a uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so there are five feet you you might have a problem you might have a question uh, there is only one syllable at the last feet it doesn't matter there is a word for that i can't remember there are situations like that don't worry about it uh, there are not five feet are there in this line so now we have to find out the stress pattern stress is um, it is higher in pitch longer in duration and generally a little louder than unstressed that is called stress so in this line this is the pattern thou fair haired angel of the evening so uh unstressed stress pattern is there unstressed stress unstressed stress okay now let's go to the formula in a line there might be two two or three syllable feet two or three syllables equal to one feet today we are going to talk about only two syllable feet uh, unstressed stress syllable pattern equals to em then stress patterns ek ek vidhi patterns thiyena puluwang unstress stress thiyena puluwang stress unstress thiyena puluwang ehem nathan stress stress pattern ekak thiyena puluwang ehem nathan unstress ma dekak thiyena puluwang e wata kiyena nam ek ek ekak ekak wenas unstress stress nan thiyenne api ekak dekiyenama em kiyala if there are five feet in one line it is called penta etukota feet gana wenas wenukota api ekak kiyena nam wenas wenama five feet nan api kiyanne penta to the evening star is composed in em big penta meter that is the conclusion that that is the meter of the poem okay now let's move on to the next poem the eagle alfred lord tennyson wrote it he clasps the crack with crooked hands let's find out syllables clasps these are monosyllabic words crack with crooked there is there are two syllables actually when you add e s i e s s e d the when we add those suffixes we can divide syllables from the suffix and also there is a rule what is it there is uh, one consonant and the first syllable is long sounded so we can divide from the first consonant hands okay now let's count the feet how many syllables are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so in one feet there is only two syllables so uh, there are four feet 
in this line. Now we have to find out stress pattern. He clasps the crack with crooked hands. He clasps the crack with crooked hands. Stress pattern is unstressed stress. Okay, stressed uh, syllables are in red color. There is a symbol for that. I will explain it later. Here for you to understand, I have colored the words syllables. Let's go to the formula. Two or three syllables equal to one feet. Unstressed stress syllable pattern is called EM. Four feet in one line is tetra. In the previous poem, we learned five, uh, five feet in one line. So it is called penta. If there are four feet in one line, it is called tetra. Now we can con uh, conclude like this. The eagle is composed in iambic tetrameter. I have divided all the syllables in all the words in this poem and as it is a uh, very a small poem and also I have uh, divided the feet and I have counted the number of feet and I decide I uh, found out the stress pattern and then I decided the meter of the poem okay now you can do extra activities you can find out uh, you can select some poems from your anthology and do this as an exercise to the Nile Son of the old moon mountains, African. Well, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain it. Look why the idea is going to be done. I'm going to be done. Feet are going to be done. Answer stress pattern. I'm going to be done. 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 A bird came down the walk. In this poem, there are two meters. There are uh, five stanzas in this poem, uh, four lines in each. In the third, in every third lines of stanzas, uh, it is in another meter, and the rest of the lines are in another meter. I selected the first line and the third line. In the first stanza to find out the meter. This is the first. Line. There are through. Uh, sorry. Three. Um, feet. Stress pattern is unstressed. Stressed. Formula is two or three syllables equal to one feet, and unstressed pattern is called EM. Three feet in one line, it is called tri. So, a bird came down the walk is composed in iambic trimeter. There is another meter in this poem. It, in each third line, we can find the other meter. There are four feet, and stress pattern is unstressed stress. So. It is composed in iambic tetrameter. Okay, these are the meters. A line with uh, one foot is monometer. A line with two feet diameter, and the list goes: trimeter, tetrameter, pentameter, hexameter, heptameter, and octameter. Today we learned three meters. What is it? A line with three feet trimeter, a line with four feet tetrameter, and a line with five feet pentameter. And also, when we consider about feet, there are two syllable feet and three syllable feet. When we, when we come into two syllable feet, uh, by considering the stress pattern, there are also some name. Unstressed stress pattern num EM, stress unstressed num trochi, stress stress num spondy, unstress unstress num pyric. Okay, the lesson is almost over. I will give you some uh, facts on stress. Then, while then, syllables when kara ek prashna kuna itna rules tika manki ala dunna hai. Bas stress se ka ko humda decide decide karani ki ne ke gan. Yatta lo akti na mana mom porda ko ala te ek gan porda kiya na. 
the most common vowels associated with weak syllable is a a sound එක තියෙනවා නම් ඒක weak syllable එකක් ඒවා unstressed මේ බලන්න මම මේ a කියන කොටස් දැන් සාටන් කියන වචනේ සීටන් කියලා කියවෙන්නේ නේ එතකොට ටර්න් අන් කියන කොටස unstressed ඒ කියන්නේ a sound එක තියෙනවා නම් ඒ යම් කිසි syllable එකක ඒ කොටස unstressed වෙනවා අන්න ඒකයි මෙතන කියන්නේ ඊළඟට මේ L E word එන්වලින් ඉවර වෙනවා නම් ඒ වගේ ඒ කොටස් ඒ සිලබස් unstressed වෙනවා බලන්න මේ ස්ට්‍රග් දැන් මේ මේ තියෙන සිලබ මේ මේ තියෙන සිම්බල් එක තමයි අපි මේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් කියන එක හඟවන්න පාවිච්චි කරන සිම්බල් එක ඔකේ ඊළඟට primary secondary uh, stress කියලා uh, තියෙනවා මෙතනදී වෙන්නේ මෙන්න මේ suffixes හරි තියෙනවා නම් දැන් අපි suffix එක එකතු කරන්න කලින් root word එක තියෙනවනේ ඒ root word එකේදී අපිට stress කියලා අපි decide කරපු එකම තමයි suffix එක එකතු කරාට පස්සේ stress වෙන්නේ ඒ stress එක වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ කියන එකයි මෙතන කියන්නේ ළඟට මේ මේ ගැන ඔයාලා තව ටිකක් අධ්‍යයනය කරන්න ඔයාලට මේක ටිකක් ඇඩ්වාන්ස් යන නිසා මේ ඔයාලට ටිකක් බෝඩ් වෙන්න පුළුවන් නිසා මයික් මෙන්ට කියගෙන යනවා හැබැයි ඔයාලට මේ ගැන පොඩ්ඩක් තව ස්ටඩි කරන්න පුළුවන් මේ මෙතනදී කියන්නේ i o n කියන suffix එක එකතු වුණාට පස්සේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් වෙන්නේ ඒ i o n එකට කලින් තියෙන සිලබල් එක මේ තියෙන ඇප්ලිකේෂන් කියනකොට මේ i o n එකට කලින් තියෙන සිලබල් එක තමයි ස්ට්‍රෙස් වෙලා තියෙන්නේ මේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් මාක් එක තමයි මෙතන තියෙන්නේ and also e d s e s i n g එකතු වෙන වෙලාවට මොකක්ද වෙන්නේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් පැටර්න් එක ඒක වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ ඒ වර්ඩ් රූට් එකේදී තිබුණ ස්ට්‍රෙස් එකම තමයි ඒක එකතු වුණත් ඒ විදිහටම තියෙනවා ඒක වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ හවුස් දැන් හවුස් කියනකොට මේ හවුස් කියන වචනේ ස්ට්‍රෙස් නේ එතකොට ඒක e s එකතු වුණා කියලා වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක ස්විච් කියනකොට ස්ට්‍රෙස් වෙන්නේ ඒ ස්විච් කියන වචනේ ඉතින් ඒක e s එකතු වුණා කියලා ඒ ස්ට්‍රෙස් එක වෙනස් වෙන්නේ නැහැ ඒකයි මෙතන කියන්නේ Okay, there is a homework. What about words ending in I C I C A L, etc. etc. Look up it. And also, I will suggest to you this uh, dictionary, Macmillan dictionary, and then you can uh, find out phonetic transcriptions. Then it will be easy for you to find out the stress and the syllables. Okay, let's move on to the rhyming scheme part quickly. I don't explain this much. Triplet, the eagle. What is a triplet? The rhyming is uh, scheme is A A A B B B. Balan, hands, lands, stands. And the rhyme changes from here. Crawls, walls, falls. Three lines in a stanza is called terset. So, uh, three lines वाला एक कम rhyming pattern निकलती है ना वाना अब ये करके ना वाना triplet टेका किया ला. And also me, अबे to the to the evening star वाला me rhyming pattern निकल regular ना है. अबे अबे तो बालान ना पुलवंग समाहरा internal rhyming स्थित है ना. Line निकल line निके म rhyming වෙන අවස්ථා බලන්න light thy bright light bright are rhymed smile while are rhymed sky thy are rhymed these are called internal rhyming four lines in a stanza is called quatrain 20 lines in the poem so there are five quatrains in our poem the bird came down the world walk uh, The rhyming scheme is A B C D D E F E sonnets. This is a Petrarchan sonnet because this is the regular rhyming scheme of the Petrarchan sonnet A B B A, A B B A C D C D C D. And there is another optional way that is C D E C D E pattern also. अपने देरगंड पुला में सिस्टर देखें दी C D E C D E के ना रिटर में पैटर्न का तीन ना पुलवा. A B A B B A A B B A C D C D C D. इमने तं A B B A A B B A C D E C D E के ना 
pattern එක තියෙනවත් පුළුවන් pet fraction sonnets වල. මෙතනදී 8 lines stanza is called octave. octave කියලා අපි කියනවා මේ වගේ sonnets වල lines පළවෙනි lines අතට. ABBA ABBA rhyming scheme uh, in stanza it is called octave of pet fraction sonnet and ඊළඟට තියෙන 6 line එක ses ටෙට් කියලා කියනවා ඒකට තියෙන රයිමින් ස්කීම් එක තමයි CD 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 හැම නැත්තම් CD E CD E CD sorry CD E CD E තියෙන නැත් පුළුවන් okay that's all about today's lesson i hope you got an idea about uh, poetic meter and the rhyming scheme i went fast at the end of the lesson i'm sorry for it maybe i will explain it uh, another day with a, another lesson So let's meet from another lesson soon until then have a nice day thank you